whether we're cramming for midterms last minute or starting our comms essay or speech the night before, it's something we all deal with. And so last year, <coughs> I attended a lecture um, given by Robert Sapolsky on stress, and it was called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. And he discussed how prolonged stress can cause mental afflictions. Um, and so this inspired me to give my speech today on it. So today I will um, tell you about what stress is and how it affects our bodies, the types of stress seen in the human population versus in the animal kingdom, and the different ways that humans and animals deal with stress. So according to an uh, annual review of clinical psychology titled Stress and Health, by S.D. Siegel, a stressor is something that knocks our homeostasis out of balance. And a stress response is the way our body responds to these stressors. And this stress response is really important in small amounts, like for our flight or, fight or flight response. But if it's <coughs> in prolonged periods, it causes <coughs> internal damage. So when we're stressed, according to Robert Sapolsky in Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers, published in 2004, our body releases a hormone known as epinephrine or adrenaline, which is what triggers our fight or flight response and um, causes an array of physical responses such as increased blood pressure, um, heightened memory, clearer vision, and it also shuts off um, our unimportant body functions such as our reproductive system, digestive, <coughs> and growth because these are expensive and slow processes that aren't important to fighting or flighting right in that moment. So you guys may have experienced this when you go up to give a speech and you get nervous and your adrenaline starts to flow and um, your mouth gets dry. This is when you stop salivating. This is the first step to oops, shutting off your digestive system. So in short, this is really good. when. when um, uh, you need to get out of a dangerous situation, um, but it's detrimental to your health when it, you're in a constant state of stress. So wild animals illustrate acute stress um, because they're only worried about survival while in being, and so they stress when they're knocked out of homeostatic balance However, human stress, when we think we're about to be knocked out of homeostatic balance, which causes this dilemma of chronic stress. Okay, I don't know why these aren't changing. Oh, okay. um, so what happens when the stress response is turned on for too long and too often? According to American Psychology Association, Steve Tovain states in his article, Stress Effects on the Body, that when stress is expelled chronically, it takes a toll on your organs because your body releases the same type of stress hormone whether you're being chased by a lion or sitting stuck in traffic. Um, so taken from an article in American Institute of Stress published in 2007, C. Morgan claims that chronic stress causes internal damage or er, in, in, internal hor hormonal changes that causes high blood pressure, stomach ulcers, kidney disease, and other consequences as well. So as I stated earlier, um, a body process that halts when adrenaline is released is growth. And according to K. Ritu in the Indian Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism, growth hormone disappears from your bloodstream when you're under a lot of stress and tissue de repair declines. And so this was observed in children who grew up in stressful environments like a war zone and suffer from dwarfism. So back in the 1940s, scientist Hans Selye, who was the first, phys was the first physician to recognize stress. And according to his article, The Stress Concept, published in 1976, he said that when you're under constant stress, uh, your body will run out of the stress hormone from constantly being secreted. However, this was wrong. Your body continues to secrete this hormone, which shuts off those unimportant body functions and causes more wear and tear on your body, 
um, which is one of the other reasons for causing heart disease, stomach ulcers, etc. So back to the idea of why zebras don't get stomach ulcers. So naturally in our stomach we have this bacteria that can cause ulcers, but our body fights it off um, and it's harmless. However, when we're under chronic stress, our stomach walls become susceptible to um, stomach ulcers because our body is constantly saying, oh, repair it tomorrow, repair it tomorrow, repair it tomorrow. And so that's how the ulcers are created. So according to psychology stress in the immune system from the Psych Bulletin published in 2004, the constant delay of the immune system makes you vulnerable to infection. So maybe around finals week, you are getting sick, and that's the reason why. So now I will discuss a way in animals that animals versus humans cope with chronic stress. So in Robert Sapolsky's speech, he gave an example of a study of lab rats where two rats um, were put under chronic stress and one of the rats kept biting the other rat. And so that was kind of his outlet of, for his stress. And so at the end of the study, the rat who was biting the other rat did not have stomach ulcers while the rat who was being bitten did. Um, so these coping me me mechanisms are important to have in humans too. Um, to deal with stress, and I'm not saying going around to bite people during finals week, <laughs> but having a, an outlet for your stress can greatly improve your health. According to Social Support and Resilience to Stress, published in 2007 from Psychiatry Social Support, it's also essential for your mental health to have, um, have social support. So whether it's hanging with your friends, hiking, or meditation, it's important to de-stress. So today I've discussed what a stressor is, what it does to your body in different quantities, the types of stress in animals versus in humans, and um, ways we can deal with stress. And hopefully now you all understand why zebras don't have ulcers. Thank you.